Hello and welcome to the February coffee tasting video where we taste the subscription coffees that we send out to all our subscribers around the world. Yes, you heard it, we do ship around the world. You can subscribe from one to six bags, but we normally send out three different coffees. So that means if you subscribe to six bags, you get two bags of each coffee, for instance. Check out our subscription on the website. You can subscribe uh, any, as long as you want. You can stop it when you want and you can upgrade or downgrade or pause it anytime you want. And uh, we do have a new website, so it should be much easier to manage this now than it used to be. So that's a good news for everyone, I think. Today I have a guest, Vang. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. Vang is one of our baristas, but uh, maybe you can tell the viewers who you are and what you do. Uh, yes, so my name is Vang and I work both as a barista and as a roastery worker, so I pack the coffees as well. Yeah, you were actually packing these coffees that we're sending out. Yes. How is it to work in the roastery? Uh, it's very fun, kind of challenging sometimes, yeah. uh, since I'm not the tallest worker, no. but I get the work done, so... Yeah, and there's a lot of bags to pack. Yeah. With our subscription, we pack, I actually don't know, we now roast, I think, 40 to 45 batches of coffee, 30 kilos each, and there's 100 bags in each batch. So that means over 4,000 bags. And uh, Vang has most likely sealed most of the bags that you will receive. Yes. <laughs> so if there are any complaints, oh. blame Vang, no. <laughs> but you also work in the coffee shop? Yes. And how is that? Uh, it's very fun to meet so many different customers from all over the world. And yeah, it's very fun to uh, have the opportunity to like show different coffees that we serve as yeah. well. So you actually taste these coffees very often because when you work in a shop, you have to calibrate the uh, coffees, you have to taste them. Of course, when we serve them, we have to talk about the flavors. Yes. So Vang is kind of an expert in that. Very, very good customer service. And uh, we do get customers from all over the world, especially during summer. Uh, yes. Yeah, last summer was crazy. So I hope this summer will be as good because it's a lot of fun to meet. Also subscribers come and visit us, oh. sometimes for the first time. And uh, it's so much fun to engage with a guest, I think. I, I miss it a lot. I don't work in the coffee shop a lot. You should work more. Yeah, yeah, I might do it once a year during our anniversary, but that's it. Yeah. yeah. Don't have time. But I'm there normally every Monday to taste the coffees we send out. Mm -hmm. uh, so every week we roast between uh, 30 and 50 coffees uh, or batches of coffee. And we take samples of each batch. And every Monday I taste those in the store. We have a little cupping room there uh, and that's kind of how we manage the quality so to make sure that we're consistent and if I feel that the coffee is drifting a little bit which means you know the raw green coffee gets older over time so you sometimes have to adjust the profile a little bit to accustom that um, and then uh, I will just do small changes to the profiles tell the roasters okay you might use a little bit more energy at the start or a little bit less at the end or something like that and then we adjust the flavor profile over time. But it's very, very small details. Mm. So most people aren't able to taste it. So it's just to make sure that it always is consistent. Yes. Should we start tasting the coffees? Yeah. Yeah? Have you had coffee today? Uh, no. Excellent. <laughs> Good start. All right. So the first coffee we're sending out is from actually the first farmer that we started working with. And when I say working with, I really mean working with. That means uh, in 2009, I think, was the first year I visited him. And uh, we started discussing how can he improve the quality of his coffees. One of the first things we did was to separate the varieties he has on the farm, because he has many different varieties. And he used to just mix everything together, make one batch of coffee, and then give me one sample of the coffee and say, this is the coffee I have this year. Now, uh, last, last uh, season when we bought these coffees, I think I got around 30 different samples, each sample representing a daily picking and a variety. So if you pick two varieties on the same day, he keeps them separate so that we can taste the difference. And by doing that, we are able to sort out if there are any kind of bad coffees uh, or if there are some that are extremely good, we can separate those and sell those separate. And since we've been doing this work for many years, not, that's not just the only thing we've done. We've also improved the drying on the farm, the process. He built a new wet mill. Yeah. 
Um, so we have kind of been collaborating on, and I've been advising him and discussing with him how can we increase the quality and also which varieties to plant more of, which varieties to remove. And we do this so that we can kind of design the coffees that we like to buy. So we buy the majority of his coffees and have been doing so for many, many years. I'm talking about Hobnil, Caceres, uh, Diaz, Diaz and, uh, in um, uh, Santa Barbara mountain in Honduras. So we sent out a geisha last month from him. And uh, today we're sending out three different coffees from his farm, but they are very different. So don't worry, they will taste different. The first one is a pacas. Oh. He grows the most of the pacas variety. Pacas is a mutation of Bourbon. He also has a little bit of Bourbon there, but uh, not many trees. So the Bourbon is kind of mixed into this pacas because there are just a few trees here and there. They're very old. The pacas in this area is normally quite fruity and also a little bit chocolatey, but this particular lot is from the lower part of the farm. And I know that because it's picked very early in the season and that's when they start to pick, normally January, February. Uh, the coffee is from that period is from the lower part of the farm. And the farm goes up the hill from 1500 to 1800 meters. And the coffee is from the top, it is normally harvested later in the year. Should we taste? Yeah. yeah? What do you taste? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Any flavors in particular? I feel like I taste some notes of stone fruit. Yeah. So it's very like refreshing, but it's also kind of round at the same time. Yeah. These coffees are normally quite sweet. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that the first pickings are not as intense when it comes to fruit flavor as the later pickings. And that's in general in the whole area, actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you do get a little bit of stone fruit, yes? Yeah. I also like, I always throw out the red berry uh, mm. flavors because I do feel that there are some red berry flavors here, but uh, it's hard to describe. It's not like strawberry. Uh, yeah. It's not raspberry. It's maybe like a mix together. Yeah, because it has some uh, like round sweetness to it. Yeah. And maybe a little bit like dark chocolate, baking chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice integrated acidity, so it's juicy, mm. uh, but it's also quite round, like you say. Round meaning it's full bodied, sweet, and nice dark chocolate finish, I think. Yeah? I agree. You agree? Fantastic. Yeah. So, the pacas from Nascimento, um, the altitude of this particular lot is around 15 to 1550, I guess. It's the lower part of the farm, so when you enter the farm, the first thing you see is like he built a new mill. It's like three story building, so it's huge. He has an apartment there for the farm manager. And below that, you have a small parcel of land where he has planted pacas. And um, that's where this coffee is from. So lower part of the farm. Okay, and then we can, uh, this was uh, the coffee that he was, like, had on his farm when I went there in 2009, the pacas. And he has planted more because it, I feel like it's one of the better performing varieties on the farm. Um, but it doesn't mean we don't like to experiment. So Hobnil, I think it was in 2019, he decided to buy a little bit more land, yeah. but in a different area. So when you're in El Cielito, where his first farm is, um, you have to kind of drive down the mountain again, <laughs> and all the way around to another area and up the mountain again. Oh. So it's quite close, yeah. but uh, you have to kind of drive around. So it will take, you know, half a day to just get there. Uh, it's an area called El Sauce. And he bought uh, some land together with his friends. Uh, he sold part of it now because it was too much to manage. But he kept two uh, plots, uh, El Vikingo that we sent out last month, the oh. Geisha. And then this one is Finca La Berta, which is named after his mom. Oh. Um, uh, Finca Berta, I think it is. It's not La Berta, it's Berta. Um, and um, here he planted pacamara. You know what pacamara is? A uh, coffee variety? <laughs> yeah. Um, we do buy pacamara from, for instance, Los Pirineos. Mm, in El Salvador. Yes. And I know that the seeds of this pacamara is from Diego in Los Pirineos. Oh, because okay. they actually do sell seeds, certified seeds. So I know that this is a, a good pacamara but it tastes completely different than the Pacamara from Los Pirineos. 
remember we had the Christmas coffee? Yeah. Yeah. So that was quite fruity and chocolatey. Let's taste this and see how it is. So same seeds planted in a different country, I guess. <laughs> Very different. Very different, yeah. yeah. And also different from the pakas, yeah. I'll give you some more of the first. Any flavors in particular, Vang, that you taste? It's kind of difficult to describe, but it, it it's is quite a little bit. It's quite sweet. Yeah. But it's not as like uh, whiny as the Pacamara from uh, Los Pineos. For sure not. Yeah. So it's quite different. Yeah. I feel like uh, this is, I think, the f second or third harvest from these plants. Uh, it's more intense now than it was last year. Mm. But it's kind of like a herbal mm -hmm. character. Uh, I kind of like that herbal character. But uh, for me, it's more like a really dark chocolate. Uh, yeah. Sweet, like not high acidity, but like r like strong coffee almost, mm -hmm. and it has a little bit of these herbal flavors. There is some kind of fruit acidity there, but it's hard to describe, I think. Yeah. yeah. But super nice contrast with the pacas. Mm -hmm. If you go back to the pacas, you get this uh, slight more stone fruit character that you mentioned. Yeah, now the pocus is like super sweet. Yeah. Interesting, huh? Mm. How it changes. Okay, so first coffee, pacas, second coffee, pacamara, both from the same farmer in Honduras. And the third coffee is a variety called Icafe Noventa, which means Icafe is an institute in Honduras, coffee institute. They have developed a, a cultivar that is resistant or was supposed to be resistant yeah. against leaf rust. It is not anymore because the leaf rust uh, is a fungus that has mutated. So now it can, can attack these trees. But it was supposed to be resistant. And uh, these hybrids are normally Hibrido de Timor, which is a mix of Robusta and Arabica mixed with something else uh, to improve the flavor and everything. So a lot of coffee buyers are very skeptic to this coffee oh. because it's a hybrid. Uh, I like to have an open mind, you know, <laughs> so uh, it's okay to be skeptic, but mm. you should at least try the coffee before you say, no, I don't want this. <clears throat> yeah. We have the same in Colombia with the Castillo. Uh, when the Castillo was released, everyone was like, oh, the Castillo is so much worse than the Catura. It turns out uh, it's not. It, it can also be better than the Catura. So it really depends how you grow it, how you, where it's grown, how you process and everything. But this is an Icafe Noventa, and it's from the top of the farm of um, uh, Nascimento. So that parcel of land is actually called Cielito Lindo, beautiful Cielito. And it actually belongs to Hobnil's father, mm. but Hobnil's father is too old to work there. It's so <laughs> he's a fit man, but he's over 80 years old, and it's a very, very steep hill to go up and yeah. down the mountain. So now Hobnil is taking care of the farm. and. It's mainly Icafe Noventa. There are a few Paca trees there, but it's mainly Icafe Noventa. Uh, should we taste it? Yeah. See how it tastes like? Hmm. Good? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can't just drink, you have to describe it. For but, the it, viewers. But, it, but it was really good. So yeah. I, just <laughs> I haven't had my coffee today. You know? Yeah. What do you taste? Fruit. Fruit. A lot more. Mm, a yeah. lot more fruit. A lot more fruit. This coffee is always really, really fruity. Mm. It's actually the first coffee I bought from this farm. I bought it through the Cup of Excellence auction in 2008. I bought it again in 2009. And then that's when I started to visit them to see if I could buy more coffee direct. Mm. Um, and I have been ever since. But this, I think it came fourth place in the Cup of Excellence when I bought it the first time. Wow. And it's an Icafe Noventa, which, you know, is unheard of in that country. Because yeah. normally the Icafe Noventa, it's really herbal. Mm. Uh, doesn't have a lot of fruit flavor. But when it's grown at this altitude on this particular farm, it tastes like red fruit and wine. And it's floral, I think, mm. as well. 
Should I have more of it? Mm, yes, you can. <laughs> it was really good. Yeah. So let's compare it to the Pacamara and also the Pacas, just for fun. Mm -hmm. Now you get the really herbal flavor from yeah. the Pacamara. Let's go back to the Celito. And then the Pacas. And now the Pacas is less fruity again and more like sweet. Mm. Uh, so how you taste the coffee and the carryover effect from one to another really affects how you perceive the flavor. So if you don't subscribe to more than one bag, I highly recommend just get another coffee from mm. anywhere and taste it side by side. And then it's easier to pick out the fruity flavors. Which one was your favorite? The this third one? one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's also, uh, we don't have a lot of that coffee because uh, it's on top of the mountain, you know, and the mountain goes like this. <laughs> so um, the piece of land there is much smaller and uh, they don't have too many trees there. So. Uh, we have less of it, uh, but it's also really, really nice coffee, I think. So make sure every time you taste the coffee to have an open mind. Mm. You know, you might have tasted the variety before, like the Pacamara, and maybe you didn't like it then, but uh, maybe you'll like it now. Uh, don't judge it just because of the name or the variety, because the coffee can taste fantastic, I think. That's the lesson to take home here. Great. Um, I really enjoy drinking all these coffees, yeah. but uh, different uh, times of the day and everything. So um, I hope you like the coffees as much as we do. Uh, anything else we need to talk about? Do you have any questions? Mm, no, do you have any questions? Not really. I asked you which one was your favorite. Mm. I think also for me the third one, but uh, yeah, I like all of them. Uh, or wait, uh, why are people skeptical about that cultivar again? The Ica Fenomenta? Yeah. Uh, it's because uh, when you develop a new variety, uh, normally, uh, or at least in the past, the researchers have been more focused on resistance against leaf rust and other diseases. So they choose, uh, very often they choose Hibrido de Timor as the kind of mother plant, um, because the Hibrido de Timor is a natural crossing between Robusta and Arabica, and that means it's more resistant, but the flavor is not very good. So then you back cross that plant with, for instance, Caturra or Catuayi, and then you develop new variety. Uh, it takes 25 years, actually, or a minimum 25 years to establish a new variety uh, because it's just done by cross-pollination. Mm -hmm. So you cross-pollinate uh, Hybrido de Timor with, let's say, Caturra, and then you get uh, seeds that you plant, and then you plant seeds. It takes four or five years for the trees to grow up. You select the ones you like the most, the tall ones that produce well, that doesn't have leaf rust. You take the seeds from those, you plant those again. Up comes new trees, they all look very different. You select the best ones and you do that five times and then you have a more stable variety. Uh, so that's normally how it's done. I don't remember exactly what uh, Ica Fenoventa consists of, but you can find out on the World Coffee Research uh, webpage uh, if you are interested in that. Um, and um, yeah, so the reason why people are skeptical is because it has, far away, it has some robusta genetics. Oh. And very often these hybrids do taste very herbal and not as good as, for instance, the Pacas. But out of these three coffees, for me, at least, it's the best. Yeah. But it's mainly because it's grown in a place where it really likes to grow. So it gives better flavor. Make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay, I'll, enough talking. Uh, let's uh, look forward to these coffees, but also for next month. Because next month, I think the key word for next month is Kenya. All right, that's a little hint. So if you don't subscribe to our coffees, make sure to do so. And you will be able to taste some really, really nice coffees. Because the coffees we have here are not necessarily high volume coffees, so uh, sometimes the coffees are only for our subscribers and not available anywhere else. Cool? Yes. Thank you, Vang, for joining. Thank you so much for letting me join. Thank you for the viewers to, for viewing and uh, for the subscribers for subscribing. And I will see you next month. Ciao, ciao.